Hello everybody, welcome back to Ubrink Studio. Anita here, based in West Norfolk. Um, this is part of March's challenge where we're using our scrap bags. And if you remember, my scrap bag had lots of these little bits and pieces in them left over from when I was bag making. So to show you what I've been up to with them, and I'll just get some out of the way so that you can actually see. Um, I was thinking, because they're quite nice sizes and shapes, we could do some uh, patchwork or quilting with them. So I've been piecing some pieces together. This is called Log Cabin. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to do this um, without sewing it, because obviously this one's already sewn and then you can just take it from there. So I'm just going to adjust the camera so you can see what I'm up to as usual. Okay, I think that's okay. Right, so these little bits and pieces that I've got, log cabin is very simple to do. You just need to think about how you're gonna work your squares around and how big you want it to be. So my strips are all approximately two to two and a half inches wide, and they are all different lengths because they are off cuts from the bag making and including some tiny little squares here. I'm not quite sure how I ended up with squares with these bags because they're all the same. So your center, you want two squares that you're going to stitch together like that. So you need to decide which size your squares are going to be and you also need to decide on your seam allowance. With this one, I've used a quarter of an inch seam allowance on here. Um, otherwise it would have been too big. So putting your right sides together, just stitch down it and then open it out. And that is those two center squares there. Then your next piece is going to come across here. So we need to find a piece that will fit across there, like so. I'm going to move this back a bit and you can see how I'm building it. Okay, so that's going to come edge to edge. If it doesn't quite come edge to edge, using your rotary cutter um, and a template of some description, you can just trim it. So you get rulers of all different sizes and just making sure that you've got it all straight safety off, trim it, safety back on. Okay, now I tend to trim these as I'm sewing them, um, mainly because I'm probably too lazy to do it the other way. So we've now got these three here, which is on this one. If I show you, we are currently Here. Okay, so we have this long one here and the two squares here, right? So that's this here. Then we're going to come down a side. Now it depends on whether you're left handed or right handed, it's irrelevant which way you go, so long as you continue working in the same way as you're going round. So I'm now going to come down here and um, may put that one there, who knows. So I would stitch that from there down to there. So I'm sewing from this top edge down to this edge. This is excess, I don't need it, okay? So the next one is going to come across here. So I might look at, I don't know, perhaps this one. So I'm going to sew this edge to this edge here. And now I'm going to come up here, um, maybe this one, see, so that one I'm going to sew from here to here and then I need one to come across here, uh, so let's have a look, have I got something a bit longer, it's a bit longer, so that one could come across there like that. 
So if I move that back a bit, you can see. Okay, so if I will now stitch from there to there, always stitching right sides together. And one of the key things to remember when you're stitching different coloured fabrics together is that you always turn your seam allowance to the darker fabric, not the lighter fabric. So for example here, this is the darker fabric and this is pressed this way for stitching. You always go dark to light, uh, from light to dark. Okay, and then you just keep going round. So you decide how you're going to keep going round um, and how big you want it or how small you want it. You might want to do them smaller than this. This is just the size of the strips that I have got um, that I'm using. Um, you know, I may, if I want to keep going, I might put that one on there and stitch from there to there. Uh, I don't know if I've got anything else long enough at the moment. There's another one of them. So that one could come across there. So that we're stitching from there to there. So I'm going to stitch along here. And then I would need another one coming up here. Uh, have I got anything long enough? Yeah. No, of course not, Anita. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? There's another one of those. Oh, hang on, that's a different one. So this one could come up there like that mm. as well. And I could might I might want to stop there, but if not, you could keep going. You can keep going and you can make it as big as you want to. You can do this and make a great big cushion. Um, you can make a bag out of it. Once you've got this, sewn like this you can then quilt this and uh, you can quilt by stitching in the ditch which means you're stitching in where your seams are so that you can't see it but it would make this all puff up or you could put a design on here and stitch that on your machine or by hand um, whichever you want to do i mean the, these are, are all different colors purely because this is what i've got but one of the things that you could do is a design where you're using planes, although this isn't truly plain, plain fabrics similar to this um, and then you can add other fabrics to it. So that was just one way that we can use up some of our scraps and on the next video I will show you how to cut them, uh, sew them into strips and then cut them and re-sew them so that you end up with smaller strips or squares which you can also use um, in your scrap bag challenge. Thank you for watching.